I believe this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this year is out of landing a Kerbal on the moon and returning him safely to Kerbin. I have approved a budget from the Kerbal Aeronautics and Space Administration of 450,000 Kerbucks for a series of missions in the hopes of eventually having a total of six moon landings and returns to Kerbin. All right, you heard the guy. The government has suddenly taken a sudden interest in space exploration, and to that end, they've contracted us to send manned missions to the moon. However, they're not all that interested, so they're only paying us 450k up front and 150k for each landing. That would be enough for a dirt cheap, send them there, bring them home, one shot. But that's not what they want. They're the government, so they want all this safety majogger, and that's expensive. That's That would be a lot of launches that do nothing and then come right back home. What we can do, however, is go reusable. We use the same rocket for the testing as we do for the actual missions. We do this by never bringing it home. We leave it in orbit and run cheap little ships up and down to reman and refuel the main mothership. This is going to be a long one, so let's get to work. Our first launch will be a test of the Star Swirl crew transport system. This will be a fairly boring one since we're just coming up and going back down, but since this is the first 3 meter rocket we've built, I want to make sure that it will hold up to the task. See you at the launch pad. And holy cow, where did Bob come from? Uh, apparently Bob did survive the crash and was very quiet about doing so. Uh, wandered back into the cafeteria, sat down, had some lunch, put on a spacesuit, and is now in this rocket. Let's hope we don't kill him again. It's SAS, launch, and oh, okay, I think that engine might have become unattached. Uh, hold launch, hold launch, let's see. Uh, no, not saving, uh, F3, there we go. Okay, it doesn't say that it attached, so I'm gonna scrub anyways. Uh, roll it back to the VAB. Okay, I've moved the side stages down a bit so that the weight of the rocket is landing on them instead of the central rocket. That way it's more spread out. So let's throttle up, SAS on, and launch. Going pretty good. Oh yes, Bob, you remember how this goes. Now performing gravity turn. Gravity turn complete, now staging. Staging complete, rocket is spinning. All right, I probably won't show you that ascent because it's by this point kind of boring. It, it goes up, it turns, it almost falls apart, and so on. But we are in a pretty good orbit, uh, a bit more lopsided than I'd like it, but I'm not gonna spend the time to re-even it out because it's not going to be doing anything once it's up here. We can worry about that on later missions. I am very pleased to see that we have almost our entire stage left. This tank is almost completely full. That's good because it'll let us refuel our transfer vehicle, the, the craft that's going to get us to the moon and back. This is going to, when I'm doing a real mission, this will be staying in orbit around Kerbin for as long as the mission takes. When the transfer vehicle gets back to Kerbin, they'll just hop back onto this to deorbit. The transfer vehicle itself will just stay there. It'll just stay in orbit for all time and be reused as much as possible. And now let's see just how much of this orbital velocity I can kill off. We are on our, re our retrograde vector. Lock that in and let's burn. Let's see if we can't just fall straight into the water. No trajectories or anything. That might be a mistake because we're about to come over land, I think. Uh, it's really hard to tell. I wish they'd make a better reentry guide something. And we're now in contact with the atmosphere. We weren't quite able to completely negate our velocity, but we came very, very close. Uh, actually, we might be able to do it just now. Uh, of course, it's 
it occurs to me that in order to do this, this one stage has to have the same delta V as the entire rest of the rocket, which, while possible, is a bit silly. And, and, it, and I might have done it, actually. Uh, you can see that I'm just barely moving here, almost hovering now. That's a very sharp thing that isn't in orbit. Uh, let's... Okay, let's cut that and jettison that stage and open the parachutes and fast forward. And there go the parachutes. Uh, packed on two of them, mainly because I just didn't have anywhere to put it on top. If I put it on top here, I was afraid the stress would be too much and this entire mast would just snap off with the stress. That would be funny, but I can't do that to Bob again. That's just too much. He's only one Kerbal. Oh look, they're, they're almost synchronized. Like, they're all screaming that way and then they're all screaming that way. And If that ever happens, I hope I catch it because that'd be really funny. And the parachute should deploy any second now. Any second now. These parachutes have terrible comedic timing. And a lot of clipping issues. Oh, there we are. Let's bring that down in. Perfect. Absolutely nothing went wrong. That scares me. Oh well, on to phase two.